Welcome to Electron Online. In digital electronics, sometimes the input is of a very short duration and stays at a certain amplitude for that short duration. We call those pulse impulse. Inputs are simply a pulse. So here we have a graphical example of what that might look like. The input is zero until it reaches a certain amount of time, let's say time equals two, and then it goes to an amplitude of five, could be five volts, it remains there for the next two seconds and then goes back down to zero. How do we mathematically represent a pulse like that, an input pulse? We can do that with those functions that we just saw in the previous videos. In this case, we can use the unit step function to represent a single pulse. Now, if we imagine for a moment that the pulse was continuous after two seconds and remained high forever, then we can represent that by that particular unit function. For example, we then say that for the unit step function that starts at t equals 2 or 2 seconds, this would be time, maybe in seconds, we can then say that this would be the amplitude, because the amplitude is greater than 1, so it's 5 times, so it would be 8 times the unit step function, which has been shifted from time equals 0 to time equals 2, and this would be t minus t sub 1. Now, this would represent an impulse that starts at t equals t sub 1, in this case 2 seconds, and remains there forever. Of course, it doesn't do that here. After 2 seconds, it goes back down to 0. How can we do that? Well, we can do that by adding another step function, a negative step function, that will then subtract this portion from the first step function. That can be done by saying minus, again, the amplitude, Minus because we want to subtract it. Now we're going to put in a step function that starts at t2, where it's 4 seconds. So it would be the unit step function of t minus t2. And these two combined represent the pulse. And so we can say that v as a function of time can be represented by the sum of those two step functions. If we plug in the numbers, this would be equal to 5 times u times t minus 2 minus 5 times u of t minus 4. And so this then would allow a pulse that has a magnitude of 5 for the two seconds between time equals 2 to time equals 4. If we separate these two as two separate functions, they will look as follows. This first function will look like this. When we draw it out, after two seconds, we would get an amplitude of 5 and that would then go on forever. If we add to that plus this part of the function, which would look like this, after four seconds, it would be minus five, it would go on forever like this, this would be minus five, and so when we add this function together with this function, notice where the two do not overlap, so this would be, oh, let me write that as four, this is at 2. So for the two seconds where they don't overlap, you would end up with this piece right here, which is the pulse. After four seconds where they both overlap, the plus 5 would cancel out the minus 5, and you would end up with 0 after that. A second part of this is what would happen if we were to differentiate that input. Notice that the derivative would be an impulse function right here, zero because there's no slope here, and then an impulse function there. So if we take the derivative of this, let's write that down. So the ddt of this particular function right here, which would be equal to the ddt of 5 times the unit function of t minus 2 minus 5 times the unit step function of t minus 4 Graphically, we would end up with something that looks like this. At time equals 2, we'd end up with a delta function this way, and at time equals 4, we'd end up with a delta function in this direction. Of course, that would be infinity here, minus infinity there, at 4. And so, if we want to write that as the sum of two delta functions, we could then say that dv dt would be equal to, would be, Oh, and don't forget that since we're multiplying times 5, what we're going to say is that this would be equal to 5 times the delta function of t minus 2 minus 5 times the delta function of t plus 2. And this would be the derivative 
of our original function that represents the voltage input, which is a step function that only lasts for two seconds from t equals two to t equals four seconds. And that's how we now understand that using the impulse, the step function, and the ramp function, we haven't seen an example of that yet, we can represent almost any input voltage like that or input current to any digital circuit. And that's how it's done.